exactly why you were expelled from school. You're incapable of sticking at anything you don't enjoy, and you always think you know a better way. Don't call me or the family until you go back to university. And with that, my mum hung up the phone. And from that point, I didn't speak to my mum again for the next two years. But my mum, knowing me, I was an entrepreneur, I was going to do it anyway. I was going to drop out of university after just the one lecture, inspired by something I'd seen in my home city of Manchester, and I was going to pursue my idea of starting my first business. And here's what I saw. I saw students on campus using brick walls and walls as a way to communicate with each other. And in 2011, I thought it was crazy that we still use brick walls when we have the internet and 100,000 students on campus. So this was my mission. Build an algorithmic online student notice board. And I'd never started a business before. I didn't know what an entrepreneur was. I had no money at all. And off I went. And three years later, after blood, sweat, tears, after plunging myself into financial difficulty, getting a CCJ, that's not a good thing. A CCJ means the, the government and the court are very unhappy with you. Every bank rejecting me, expelling all of my overdrafts, moving into the worst area where all the gun crime was. Eventually, I launched my website, Wallpark. And on that day, after three years of blood, sweat, and tears, I wrote to everybody, all my friends, everybody that said they would use my website. I sent emails, and I said one thing. Wallpark is now live. And nobody came. <laughs> I went on Twitter. I typed in the word student. And the first Twitter page that came up was called Student Problems. I emailed the person who started the page. I told him to meet me in Manchester. He traveled down 150 miles. I met him, he's called Dominic McGregor, and I said, Dom, I know you don't know me, but I need you to drop out of university, move to Manchester, and build Facebook pages with me. Dom was very persuadable, so Dom dropped out of university, moved his life to Manchester, and for 500 pounds a month, me and him built the world's biggest student Facebook pages. And we built 50 of these big Facebook and Twitter assets, and we drove those four million followers we built that summer to my website every single month, and a million people came for free. At 21 years old, I went off around the world to San Francisco, Brazil, London, Thailand for a month, and I found every young person that had built the world's biggest social media pages in their bedrooms. I hired all of them and acquired all of their assets. And nearly five years later, four and a half years later, they all still work at Social Chain today. Some of these kids had 17 million followers they were talking to every day. A 16-year-old in the bottom right corner there, 16 million followers across different categories of pages. These were the biggest pages in the world around different topics, the biggest food page, the biggest sports page, the biggest fitness page, a cupcake page with two million people following it, Pomsky dogs, drinks, student problems. That page Dom started in his bedroom now reaches 1.5 billion people a month. 10 million people follow it. It's the biggest student page in the world. Sporf, started by a 17-year-old kid in his bedroom, now competes with ESPN in terms of video views every single month. 15 million people follow it on, student, on, on social media. We own the biggest gaming assets in the world for hardcore gamers, casual gamers, the biggest food channels, the biggest travel channels, the biggest YouTube channels, the biggest fitness page in the world. Channels in every kind of demographic you can imagine. We have 407 of these big social channels, 361 million followers, and we do 5.2 billion views every single month, more than the biggest media companies on the planet. And with great power comes great responsibility. And we have a certain re responsible Bible, we call it. We'll never talk about drugs. We'll never advocate for gambling. The only time we've ever got involved in politics in our existence was last year, and we didn't pick a side. We did a campaign with the government to encourage young people to vote, and on that day, it was the single highest youth voter registrations since the election had been called. Some of the things we've been called in the press, not so nice, blazingly hot social media phenomenon, social media Illuminati, a group of 20-somethings are taking over social media, and when BuzzFeed came to our office, there was only six members of staff. And they said, we heard that you can make anything the most talked about topic online in less than 30 minutes. 
And as they stood in our office, he set his timer and he said, go. And as he wrote in his article, 26 minutes later, the topic he gave us is the single most talked about thing in the country, with 40,000 people talking about it. Vice, HBO, Disney have all given us the same challenge. Make this topic the most talked about topic. You've got half an hour, and every single time, we've managed to make that the number one most talked about topic in the country within 30 minutes. As a demonstration for you guys here today, two months ago, we were in New York. It was a fashion week in New York, and our data told us one of the most contentious topics is Kim Jong-un. Donald Trump was calling him Little Rocket Man, and there was a spat going on at the moment. So what we tried to do was make Kim Jong-un fashionable. Hard task, but his haircut, maybe. The Kim Jong-un. So we made some fake graphics of these three guys here, apparently rocking the Kim Jong-un. We seeded these out across social media, and within a very short amount of time, every big social publisher was talking about this haircut, which is catching fire in New York, the Kim Jong-un. There was 55,000 comments within the first 24 hours about the Kim Jong-un haircut. There's a barbershop in New York that launched the Kim Jong-un haircut the week after this campaign. Over 10 million video views, 20, 30 million impressions, and most importantly, at least one person is walking around New York looking like an idiot. Next up, leveraging culture and emotion in distribution. We spoke at the world's largest football conference. It's called SoccerX. And within football culture, the most contentious point was that Arsenal hadn't signed a football player. Mm -hmm. And their fans were angry at the manager for not doing so. So we, being the, the philanthropists we are, we created a fake player called Rex Seco, which is an anagram of the conference's name. Here's Rex Seco from Google Images. We made some graphics to make it feel real, but also to make it emotional. He's the most expensive player they've ever signed of that age, but he's terrible. The stats say he, it takes him 606 minutes to score a goal. We pressed our magic social chain button, and the world started talking about Rex Seco signing for Arsenal. People saying he looks worth the money, Arsenal have signed the next big thing in British football. It starts trending at number nine, it moves up the trends very quickly. This guy over here said, and no one has a clue about that Rex Seco, but that wasn't necessarily true, because this guy could have sworn he'd seen him play before. <laughs> Liverpool fans for you. All of the world's media weighed in on the story. The Metro did three articles on the signing of Rex Seco to Arsenal. The Daily Mirror, Unilad, 151 million impressions that night. Global impact all around the world, and the shirt of Rex Seco hangs on the wall in our office. We work with the biggest brands in the world. We are their global agencies. The average age of social chain is 21 years old. There's over 150 of us now. This week, we hired our 200th person across four offices around the world. And most importantly of all, me and my mum have never had a better relationship. Thank you.